it's Felisa. So this vlog is probably going to be really quick because I'm thinking I'm going to do like a part one and two. So today's vlog is really for a couple of reasons. Number one, over the summer, I saw a vlog come across like my recommend my recommendations and so I clicked on it I was intrigued by the title admittedly so I clicked on it and immediately I was like what the heck is this and so I questioned God and YouTube's algorithm because like what the heck I did go to the brother's channel I did look at some more vlogs and they were all just too much at first I was offended and then I was just like floored that first of all anybody would sit and allow somebody to talk to them like that I just couldn't understand it but whatever then I was getting um like responses on my vlog for wife school and the desperation of women like just like where y'all been it's been like two years but I understand that some things just come up that way and it was just but it was just really weird like the timing I had already been um, talking about this previous YouTuber, relationship guru, quote unquote. And then all of a sudden, like my wife's school vlog came up. And, you know, one thing that just really connected in my mind was this. The desperation of black women is big business. The pain of black women is big business. Do y'all know how well some people eat and live off the pain of black women? It's ridiculous. Books and workshops and conferences and targeted campaign ads all geared to black women and feeding off of her pain of not being accepted, not being wanted. Many of us living with abandonment rejection issues from either our father or relationships, being in terrible relationships, just the, the, the list is just endless. And so that causes black women to like, you know, feed into these books and these workshops. And I'm not saying that any of that is wrong. Please don't misunderstand me. Please don't misunderstand me. I've bought my my fair share of books and I've gotten some good insight and some good nuggets uh, with them. But I think where the problem comes in is, you know, this constant badgering of, 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 the disconnect, this constant badgering of saying, you know, oh, you know, you're not good enough, so change this or change that. Like today, I just saw a comment, kind of sort of unrelated, but kind of sort of is. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. So there, I'm I'm on Facebook, and so there was a article that was posted. Two young women were found murdered on a certain side of town. And so the caption was just like, you know, when did this war on our queen start start happening? And so this guy literally said, um, when black women started to become more masculine, um, men started to treat them that way. And that's why uh, bad things are happening to them. So without understanding or knowing exactly what happened, all it said that these young women were found, found dead. Um, and now all of a sudden black women are too, too masculine. I've heard it all. Black women are too loud. Black women are too masculine. Black women are too domineering. We're not feminine enough, even though we may not be masculine. We may not be feminine enough. We're too opinionated. We talk too much. We do all the things wrong, and that's why we ain't got no man, which is why underneath one of those vlogs, some dude said, don't listen to this woman. You're going to die alone. When I tell you that you will die alone is the battle cry for ashy energy, I'm serious. Like that is what is said to black women in order to either scare us or threaten us or, you know, kind of point a finger at us and tell us that we're not worthy. See the way you act. That's why you alone. See the way you do this. That's why you alone. That is why all these relationship gurus, these conferences and these workshops exist. That is why this guy is going around calling women ugly and saying that they don't deserve to have a certain type of man because they don't present the specific physicality in order to warrant that. I'm hoping that there are enough women out there that will shake off the dust and shake off the blinders and realize that all of this is a bunch of crap. Do we have to have self-introspection? Absolutely. Do we need to have guidance in terms of how we operate? Absolutely. Do we sometimes need someone to point out 
blind areas or areas where we may not be as clear as we should be? Absolutely. Do we need to change? Probably. I can't say absolutely to that, but probably. There's always something to change. There's always something to improve upon. What it requires is self-introspection and, you know, honesty and truth coupled with compassion and, you know, good old-fashioned insight. I think that that's helpful. I also think that the idea that a woman may or may not have a significant other or, you know, may or may not be married or may or may spend the rest of their their life single does not define them. It does not it, it does not preclude them from having a rich and enjoyable life. So it's important to understand that when you get to that point and you're feeling as though another person, a relationship, a husband or what have you is going to somehow magically bring to you all of the happiness and joy that you currently lack, that's a fallacy. Get out the house. Enjoy your girlfriend. Travel. Invest in your education. All the things that they tell you that you shouldn't do and you shouldn't be focused on because you should be trying to find a man, do that. Take cooking classes. Get into counseling for yourself. Deep dive into your own issues. Deep dive into your own way of thinking. Understand and be sensitive to how you present in this world. If you have issues, work on them. If you have baggage, unpack that crap. Don't ask somebody to unpack that for you or with you. Unpack it. Ask your get on the phone right now. Text text your friends and say, you know, listen, what do I need to know about myself? And be honest and be prepared for their if their good friends are gonna tell you, girl, listen, you do too much. Or you do this, you do that. Pay attention to that. That's gonna be important. Do all of that pre work before you find your intended. And then once you guys get together, the odds are you'll be in a better position to receive that because you'll attract better. Not because you went out and you had a Brazilian butt lift. I mean, you could, but don't they get lumpy after a while? And don't you have to keep having surgery? I don't know. The point is the aesthetics is what's going to draw somebody, but it's your character and it's who you are as an overall person that's going to keep somebody. That's just my opinion. But what do I know? I'm single. I'm Felisa. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.